What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. Well, tonight, it's like 3 a.m. This lens has to go back in the morning, so I gotta shoot this now. And this is the Fuji XF 80 millimeter macro F 2.8 LM OIS WR. It's got a million names. But basically, it's just an F 2.8 macro with image stabilization and it's weather sealed. And I'm gonna straight up say that this is probably the sharpest lens I've ever used in my entire life. As I said, it's an 80 millimeter macro, so it's about 120 millimeters in a full frame equivalent. It's f2.8 up to f22. Its minimum close focus distance is 9.84 inches. It's a true one-to-one -one macro lens, so it's got one-to-one -one reproduction. 16 elements in 12 groups. It's got a round nine bladed aperture. Image stabilization, 1.65 pounds, so not too heavy. And as I said before, it's weather sealed. So taking a look at the build quality, obviously it's Fuji quality. It's built awesome, it's solid, it's metal. Uh, it's got a big rubber focus ring and the ring is nice and smooth with a nice bit of resistance behind it. Uh, the aperture ring is clicky without too much resistance. Um, you might be wondering if you pick this lens up why it's clunky. And that's because it's sitting on like a floating mechanism. Obviously once you mount this to the camera and put power to it, all of that fires up and it's not loose anymore. It's nice and solid and you don't have any clunkiness to it. Comes with a pretty deep lens hood. Uh, the lens hood's made out of plastic. It makes the lens look quite a bit bigger, but you know you need this depth so that you don't get any stray light coming in through the side. There's two switches on the side. The first switch is for turning the optical image stabilization on and off. And the other is a focus limiter, and we'll talk about that a bit later. In the back, we've got a metal mount with the rubber gasket for weather sealing. Pretty standard stuff for weather sealed Fuji lenses. I generally don't do a lot of macro photography and actually had a lot of fun with this lens. Since it's winter time here and everything's dead and looks bad and it's cold, I went to a butterfly conservatory where you can walk around and it's like literally the jungle in there. And I got to take some cool shots of some butterflies. I actually shot behind the scenes B-roll, but the SD card that that was on for some reason just died. So I have no behind the scenes of the footage, but I could show you guys some of the pictures. So as you can tell, this lens is amazing. It's extremely sharp. Keep in mind that pretty much all of those shots were handheld. And that's because I wasn't allowed to bring in the tripod in there. And so the image stabilization is working really well on these shots. And I had to be at like F11, F8 to keep more in focus because when you're shooting with a macro lens and you're up like this close, you literally have the shallowest depth of field ever and you need to stop the lens down. The micro contrast detail image rendition is amazing out of this lens. Like I said, I think this is probably the sharpest lens I've ever used. And this is exactly what I expected when they said they were coming out with a new macro lens. So since this is a one-to-one -one macro lens, you can get like right up on your subject, right in their face. I was testing out how close I could get to this pine cone that I took the shot of, and literally the pine cone was touching the lens hood. And even at f16, you can see how shallow depth of field this is. If you need it sharper, you might have to do image stacking where you start your focus point a little bit behind it and slowly pull it in and then stack your images after and post. But shooting at like f22, f16 is where you're gonna really wanna be shooting with this lens because that's where you're gonna get more of your subject in focus in that small shallow depth of field plane. I'm pretty sure that a lot of you guys are curious what this is like for a portrait lens because it kind of falls in that sweet spot, you know, the 120 millimeter area and you know, I know a lot of people are gonna want this as a dual purpose lens for doing macro shots and for doing portraits because I was already asked even on Instagram. So let's take a look at some shots. So as you can tell, this lens is super insanely sharp. I would almost say that it's too sharp for portraits, which is 
kind of stupid to say, but it's almost unflattering to skin because it's so insanely sharp. It might be awesome if you want to do like those grisly old man portraits where like the skin is like super detailed and sharp. But uh, I found that it's not really that pleasing. It also has a pretty crazy swirly looking bokeh, which to me isn't really all that pleasing, but it does look unique and it kind of gives it sort of that older like Russian vintage lens look to it. Obviously this is still way sharper, but it kind of has that like motion behind it. So speaking of bokeh, this lens has some pretty unique, interesting looking bokeh. It kind of has sort of a swirly cat eye looking bokeh. Um, compared to like the 50 to 140 at 80 millimeters, you can see how much more circular it is. But yeah, it's kind of like football shaped and has a little bit of onion ringing going on. Uh, it's pretty swirly as well. Now taking a look at this stopping it down, you can see that it starts to get a little bit more circular as you go up in the f-stops. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at the sharpness test here and also the vignetting. Obviously you can see right off the bat at f2.8 here, we have tons of vignetting in the corners and it's not that big of a deal, you can fix that in post. If we zoom in here, the lens is insanely sharp across the frame, right in the center, right to the top, all the way to the corner and it looks insanely sharp for f2.8. Moving on to f3.6, you can see the vignetting kind of cleared up a little bit. I'll jump back here. There's still some vignetting. Insanely sharp in the center. Insanely sharp in the corner. Moving on to F4. Again, obviously insanely sharp. It's gonna be insanely sharp all the way up. Right in the corner, nice and sharp. 6.4, you can see the vignetting even still at F4. Slowly going away by F6.4. And it looks like it's basically gone by F6.4. At F8, this is where I'm finding the lens to be just like crazy sharp. F11. F16, and at F22, it starts to soften up a bit, but it looks quite a bit softer compared to F2.8 even. If we zoom back here to F2.8 into the center, you can see how much sharper it is. And what I'll do is actually compare these right now. Okay, so as you can see, we got F2.8 on the right-hand side here. You can see how much vignetting there is in the corner. If we zoom in here, uh, you can see how much sharper it is in the center compared to f22 it's very soft but sometimes you need to use f22 if you want to get more in focus and i don't really need to compare the others that just kind of shows you what it looks like i guess i can compare it to f8 or 6.4 okay so this is f8 on the left and f2.8 on the right we zoom in here you can see not much changes as far as sharpness is concerned between f2.8 and f8 so very sharp at f2.8. So the last test I really wanna go over is focus speed because this lens is pretty fast for a macro lens. It does have the focus limiter switches on the side. So when you're switched to full, you're getting the full range of focus from the closest focus to infinity, which is kind of slow and can kind of be inaccurate because it's got so much travel that it has to do. So if you wanna do stuff that's a little bit further away from you, you would do 0.5 meters to infinity. Uh, that'd be good if you're doing portraits. And then you can switch it from 0.25 to 0.5 meters which is doing a little bit more closer stuff. So sticking around more of your macro shots for autofocus, but I still found that this isn't super accurate when doing autofocus when you're doing close up stuff. So if you're doing macro photography and you're like right up in there doing really close shots, it's probably better to just do manual focus. Taking a look at focus speed, you can hear the focus motor. This is set to full. Just 0.5 to infinity. Then I switched it over to 0.5 to infinity to see if it helps a little bit. And you can see the speed. Now this was close up macro focusing at 0.25 to 0.5. Now I've heard a few reviews saying this might be one of Fuji's fastest focusing lenses, but I did some tests and I found that not really necessarily true. I think that the 50 to 140 millimeter f2.8 is still a faster focusing lens and check out these test samples. This is kind of my little setup here that I'm gonna do point to point between two cameras between the 50 to 140 and the 80 millimeter. This is me just zooming the 50 to 140 to 80 millimeters, and you can see how it focuses. Now I had the 80 millimeters set to 0.5 to infinity to improve the speed, and this is its focus speed. So final thoughts, this is probably the nicest macro lens I've ever used. I've only ever used the Tamron 90 f2.8 and the Canon 100mm f2.8 L, which is pretty much a staple. That lens is super sharp as well. This lens is definitely the fastest focusing out of all of those. 
it's definitely the sharpest out of all of those and it's you know it's roughly I would actually say it's a little bit smaller than the Canon 100 millimeter definitely not as heavy but this lens does have some quirks uh, starting with the image stabilization especially if you want to shoot video with this thing it has a very choppy jaggy linear look to it which I found with a lot of the telephoto lenses with image stabilization it's kind of similar to the 50 to 140 millimeter from Fuji but obviously it comes in really handy when you're doing handheld macro shots The bokeh is swirly and kind of cat eye shaped so you don't get perfect bokeh balls until you stop it down. And because it's so insanely sharp, I don't know if it's that flattering for portraits. Obviously you can kind of do some unsharpening and post, but I don't know if I would really recommend this for portraits. I mean, personally, I don't necessarily love the look of it. It's definitely not as good as something like the 56 millimeter f1.2 or even the 50 to 140 f2.8 at 80 millimeters. Not saying you can't use it for portraits. I just personally wouldn't recommend it for it. And I know a lot of you are going to want to see a comparison to the 90mm f2. I've never used the lens, I've never even picked it up. I know it's similar in size and obviously the distance is pretty similar. But I'm pretty sure that the 90mm would still be better for portraits. And if you're thinking about getting a portrait lens, I would probably sway you more towards the 90 millimeter than this. But I don't even know what I'm talking about because I've never used a lens. I just know from what I've seen in samples that it has a nicer look to it than this for portraits. And basically this is really your only option for a macro lens with autofocus besides Fuji's 60 millimeter. But this is a true one to one and obviously their sharpest macro lens that they have until they come up with another version which might not be for a long time which might make this legendary in the long run because I feel like this lens can't really be beat in image quality it's the only thing they could do is maybe somehow figure out how to get the bokeh balls a little bit more circular but other than that it's a super nice lens if you want to pick one up I'll put a link in the description where to get that and yeah if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you dislike this video give it a thumbs down twice I'll see you in the next one